The COVID pandemic caused people to do strange things. Maybe that's why I decided to build a pipe organ. I was inspired by this wonderfully optimistic 1887 book by Mark Wicks with its detailed pen and ink drawings. The first order of business was finding a quiet blower, and that's when I discovered the Taylor Miller Organ Company in York, Pennsylvania. They have three floors of used organ parts for sale. And so I bought this used three-phase 220-volt Meidinger blower. It's total overkill at 500 cubic feet per minute and four inches of water pressure, but I'll never run out of wind. I also picked up this wind regulator. It's an ingenious design. As the bellows inflate, the springs exert an increasing force linear with distance. At the same time, the pulleys drop a curtain over the entrance port, partially shutting off wind from the blower to maintain four inches of pressure. I wanted to build my own slider wind chest following this plan from Wix, but that didn't work out so well, and in a fit of peak, I burned it. In the end, I built a chest with a Wix pipe layout and a Reisner direct action magnet under each pipe. For the base octave of the 8-foot principal pipes, the Reisner magnets don't have enough pulling power. Taylor Miller came to the rescue with a used electro-pneumatic unit chest. To power the electromagnets, I found a used Peterson rectifier that puts out 30 amps of direct current at 15 volts. The most important decision, of course, was the specification, that is, the number and kind of speaking stops. Following Wix, I decided on a specification of an 8-foot gedeckt and 8-foot principal stop, with the possibility of later adding a 2 and 2 thirds mutation or a small mixture or a reed stop. The used pipes I finally obtained come from churches in the York, PA area. An 8-foot rank of SD Gedeck pipes and an 8-foot rank of Kilgen principles or diapasons. I wanted a single manual 61 note keyboard that also took care of a switching stops. Taylor Miller had just the ticket. At the back of the keys are six rows of tiny copper wires, 61 wires per row. Thin wooden dowels connected to electromagnets shift the wires laterally. To open, say, the principal stop, in this case means activating a particular electromagnet to shift its wires. Then when, say, the middle C key is depressed, its copper bar rotates to connect with the wire of the middle C electromagnet. The magnet is energized, and the principal middle C pipe speaks, at least in theory. Besides the keyboard, I thought it would be fun to play MIDI files, not that I knew much about them. In a MIDI file, instruments are digitized onto different tracks as note-on, note-off events, not audio waves. Here in the piano roll view, the notes are given on the y-axis and time is given on the x-axis. So how can you play a MIDI file on a pipe organ? One answer is to use J Omega's MIDI to parallel circuit boards. They provide a bridge between any MIDI standard controller and any device capable of being controlled electronically by on-off switches. I bought two, one for each stop and wired them into my circuitry. After a few melted transistors and much help from the kind folks at J Omega, I now have MIDI capability. What is the outcome of all of this? Here's the last third of Rossini's Overture to the Barber of Seville, as sequenced by Andrew Parr and reduced to two stops by me. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.